Hey family, welcome to the Love You More show. Excited that you decided to join us. Do me a favor, before we even get started, make sure that you subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you can be informed on new episodes that come out every single week. Here's the thing, I need you to watch this entire interview because at the end of the interview, I got a special offer for you that I'm sure you want to be a part of. Now, it's time for the Love You More show. Flat out. Next on the Love You More show. Like I struggled a long time with people pleasing and when I walked through my divorce, I was like, yeah. man, these people don't care. Christians are some they of hurt. the only people that will kill their wounded. If you're not careful, you'll be freakier before Jesus than when you get married. Like, Come on, that's, that's, that's the point. typically what happens. That's what I was wondering. Was I wasn't raised in a Christian home. And so when I, I believe if you take yeah. divorce off the table as an option, you have to yeah. fight for whatever else will make it work. Yeah. So because good. it was something there from the beginning. I didn't know we had any level of faith until I went through divorce. Shout out to John yeah. P. Key. He called me. He said, what's going on, nephew? Yeah. I said, I said, oh, yeah, done got big. John P. Key on the gun phone. He said, yeah. nephew, look here, let me tell you something. You know I love you because of your heart, because you one of the most genuine people I've ever met. Don't get involved in that. You run low on a few nickels. I got a few dollars under the cop. Love you more. Hey family, Willie Mo Jr. here. Excited about this moment in time. Can I just tell you how um, excited I am? Um, for what we've been able to accomplish collectively, all glory to God. Over 156,000 people have subscribed to this channel. Shout out to the Willie Mo Jr. Show listen, listeners who have migrated over to the Love You More family. Listen, we all cousins, okay? Um, listen, can I be very honest? Today is a very, very special day. It's not many times where you see me sitting at a round table besides the grief episode where I sat down with E. Dewey Smith and a host of others. But today, 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 I would be so remiss if I didn't get excited early because I get the opportunity to hang out with three of the most powerful women in ministry, uh, messages, and more, okay? I'm just gonna say that. Um, to my right, the one and only Dee Dee Freeman is here. To my left, Real Talk Kim is here. And the one and only Jewel Tanker is in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the house, make some noise. <laughs> I knew was gonna do that. She not gonna behave, she KD. Gonna I'm gonna behave. Stop it. I am. Listen, it is not often that I get a chance to sit at the table with three amazing ladies. Um, I do have to say you guys look great. Really? Yeah, thanks yeah. to your team. Yeah. Thanks yeah, to you. you did a right. job. Good job. Yeah. So I'm going to just tell you, ladies, I'm not one of those guys who don't like eyelashes. I tell them the bigger the better, <laughs> even in the square. <laughs> like spot. No, I don't like, like some men like, man, I don't like all that. Like it all. Go <laughs> long with it. Yeah. I want them to bat like this right here and have a conversation <laughs> before yes. they come talk to the me. Betty Boo. They I can be your fan at night. Betty not Boo. at all. I don't want yeah. no bald head eyed woman. <laughs> I love that. Me neither. Not bald head. Me, neither. Me neither. If your eyes is bald, go on by your We got some lashes at this table. <laughs> as Queenie hides her eyelashes, girl, you usually have them. That's our makeup artist. Yes. Love of the life. So listen, we, we are excited about you guys and what you guys are doing. It's a reason why all three of you are here because you all have an amazing new show um, that we're definitely going to talk about. Here on the Love You More show, we like to do an icebreaker. And you all have been in ministry for a long time, so you know how important icebreakers are. We choose to use music. And so the song that you're gonna hear today is a song that's called Love in the Daytime. Ooh. Okay. All right. And so that means we, you ain't no side chick. Come on. Okay. What, that's what that I, means. I don't know. That means Sometimes you ain't no side can, chick. Because you're a side chick, you'll hear it. There's no loving in the daytime. They're at home. She said it I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> Of course not. And, and that's why chatter that wouldn't be me if I had agreed with right, me. Right. And that's why chatter is important. Okay. But the, the scenario is this. I come home from work and, you know, when there's trouble in paradise, it's almost as if people can actually smell trouble on you. Sure. Right? And so as a man, a lot of times there's a lot of different things coming at us, something that we can't normally tell our wives, of course. And so I come home to retreat from all of the pressure right. of work yeah. only to find her this way. Check this yeah. video out. Uh oh. So for me coming home after all that temptation, I just knew she was finna be off the chain. You hear me? I walk in only to find her. What you doing sitting on the couch on the phone? She like, cause that's what I do. Typical sarcasm. I simply said, I told you I was coming home early. I wanted to see you. She like, Okay, welcome home, babe. I hit her with the, babe, I thought you was gonna meet me at the door like this right here on one knee, ready to just do something. But you not, you just on the phone. Who you on the phone with? Why am I expected to 
have all that going on. That's not the environment you created for us. That's not what we do. I say, I text you and told you that I was coming home early. I'm trying to do what the counselor told me to do, to put you first, to let you know how important you are to me. I didn't come here for attitude. I came here for love in the daytime specifically. She hit me with the, you can't expect me to skip, hop, and jump to the new program. You got to work that in with her little attitude. You know, the thing is, going to counseling was her idea. I didn't even want to see her homegirl. But at the end of the day, like I did it for her. And I take one step towards what she wants me to do, and I'm still getting the same attitude. But you know, I just keep doing whatever I'm supposed to do. Sometimes it feel like in this relationship, it's a prison sentence. And my black ass just can't get ahead. But the truth is, if she wasn't as fine as she was, she wouldn't even know my name right now. But I can't even imagine somebody embracing her, grabbing them hips. With somebody else? <laughs> I'd be damned. Why are we waiting for the sun to go down? We both want it, so let's get it started right now. Till the night come to do your thing I've got a proposition for you ladies today I wanna make love in the middle of the day Say, I wanna cry, to cry, cry You used to knock your boots, how about I knock you out your socks Make you feel like a queen when we in between them sheets And keep you energized like some Zantrax 3, baby Why are we waiting for the sun to go down? We both so let's get it started right now Time's of the essence and I don't wanna waste mine We should get together and make love in the daytime Cause in the daytime It's important. Fight <laughs> so, so, so here's the scene. A man comes home after being married for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different temptation out there. Yep. You've been married almost 40 years 40. and you still look 25. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to start with you, Diddy Freeman. What do you do to keep the spice going in a relationship that's been together like for so long? Yeah, you got to be spontaneous and just do it. Just go for it. You can't be stuck on just trying to, you know, do the work of marriage. But you mm -hmm. really got to be intentional about keeping the, you know, the excitement about it. I mean, just like last night here, I am here and he's home and we just slept on the phone all night. Can I get an all? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, after that 40 a, years. Hey, 40 look years. At how she, she, when she said that. Yeah. Yes. 40 me. years. When you could stay on the phone all night. I love when we that. woke up this morning, it was like, you still there. <gasps> oh, no. I love Everybody that. in the room, like, oh. I love but that. I know that's true because yeah. I have watched them on vacations. They, yep. they just love Face each other time. a lot. They so, taught me how sure. to do it. So but you, you do, I mean, but, I mean, keeping it exciting, though. Yeah. I mean, wear a trench coat and don't have anything under oh, it. You oh, know, yeah, you gotta, okay. you gotta oh, do Didi. stuff. Okay. Right? You, got, you gotta do that. Look, you gotta you do got stuff. To. That video right there was very explicit. So yes, I'm was. saying, yeah. put on a trench coat, take your stuff off underneath of it, and yeah. just walk in the room. Ladies, I want to let you know <laughs> she's telling the truth. <laughs> I'm serious. Men, put it in the comments right now if you yeah. feel like, you know what? It's been a while. Because a lot of men, like, I'll be honest with you, when I'm speaking to men, they're just like, she's got, she's become too comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, for sure. And it can definitely like, she happen. She put that bonnet on. And yeah. then she just put on anything and then the love part of it just kind of goes yeah. out the door. No, I think you got to keep having a conversation because your marriage is going to go through seasons. Like mm -hmm. the first five years, me and Ben, our sex drive is equal. But then as time went on, it was a time where his was stronger and mine wasn't as strong. So I had to start doing stuff like go to the doctor, have my hormones That's checked. Good. You see what mm. I'm saying? Then I needed to lose weight because I gained weight. So when I gained weight, I wasn't feeling as sexy, right? And so therefore my drive, and so when I lost weight, we finally are now at a point, but we've been working on this for the last couple of years 
where now we're back to on some everyday stuff, but we had gotten away from that. <laughs> no, seriously, we were Come on some once a week stuff. He wanted every day. I was like, I'm fine with once a week. But I had to be honest with why am I there and what do I have to do? What stress do I need to relieve? What pressure do I need to relieve? And then what changes do I need to make? And then also I talked to him about what I wanted because it's not just sex for a woman. Mm -hmm. It's the foreplay. It's the dating. <gasps> it's the romance. Mm -hmm. It's all of that. <laughs> Hold so, on, hold on, Kim. Okay. Hold on, this. Kim. Y'all pray for this one. Give her a fan. Give me your eyelashes. I got you, bro. Now give me Kim, your eyelashes. So, so a lot of men believe, and I'll be honest with you, that, you know, I'm working. I'm yeah. paying the bills. I'm yeah. trying my best to mm -hmm. support you. How important is it for foreplay and communication to start before um, later on in the daytime? Should it start when you get home or should there be something that's happening from the beginning of the day on through? Like, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, for me, I didn't do it real well in my last relationship. I felt like I let ministry get in front of God, in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not <clears throat> wanting to go back Come because on. honey, now, listen, <laughs> now I feel like for me, it is, I'm learning how to honor this man. Like mm -hmm. there's nobody going to outdo me with him. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. telling him all day long, you're so fine. I'm going to yeah. call him on FaceTime yeah. any chance I'm not with him and say, let me just look at you. Like we are, it is important from the minute you wake up, yeah. never get too comfortable because there are women out here that are trying mm -hmm. to do what you Listen. ain't doing for him. Yeah. Wow. And so you just got to, I think communication kills assumption. Mm -hmm. And I think what you want, you give. And I think a lot of times pride. Pride gets in the way and mm -hmm. he ain't doing it for me, so I ain't gonna do it for him. Girl, you better get you some saran yes. wrap. Do whatever do you gotta do. You gotta <laughs> do. It ain't even expensive. You go to the dollar store. You yeah. have to yes. just get it in. Yeah. And get do the words. In. Let your words be kind yes. and mm -hmm. loving Absolutely. and respectful and Absolutely. And keep having uh, a conversation though, mm -hmm. because it's not just one sided. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, what the men need. I think it's important for women to oh, be yes. super honest. I right. think men are more honest about what they need and want yeah. than women are. Mm -hmm. I think because there's, there's a level of vulnerability that a woman has to do to say, hey, these are my needs, not just his. So I think that's why that communication is important because your marriage will go through seasons. You know, yeah. children, they growing up, da 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 da, da. You know what I mean? Yeah. So wh who I was five years ago and what I needed five years ago and what Ben needs five years ago is different from what he needs today. Mm -hmm. But we kept having to walk and work through it. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, okay, this is a sweet place. Yeah, that's so, good. That's yeah. good. Man, so I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta ask yeah. you guys, like what's the right approach to bring it to your woman when you do have an issue? Because it seems like when you guys have an issue, you guys can bring it to the table because you already done talked to your girl. Like, girl, I'm having an issue with this girl. You better tell them this, that, and other. <laughs> like, but when we come in with like pure honesty, it's like, oh my God, what did you, how did you, is it a certain way we're supposed to say it? Is it a time? Are we not supposed to be honest? I, it's going to hurt her feelings yeah, it's anyway. it's going to hurt her feelings anyway. I mean, it's gonna hurt his feelings anyway depending on you know whoever is giving the honest truth at that particular time mm -hmm. it's it's going to penetrate your heart because you expect to think that you know they know that you're giving your best or giving 100 mm -hmm. and then when they come back and say yeah it could be a little better I mean yeah. like for me I'll take it for me for the first seven or eight years of my relationship it was like hell on earth like wow. I really did not like him and he didn't <laughs> like me either and so the sex part was like out of the question it's like I'm <laughs> unfulfilled easy. I don't know how to fulfill Man. you I don't know what this is about and I had to have a genuine conversation with a sister of mine and I'm saying hey I don't feel like everybody else feel what is happening here and so she began to give me information about my body and give me some understanding about me. And once I got that information, I was able to take it back to him and say, okay, I thought I was being satisfied, but this is why I have headaches every mm. night because mm. I was not. And mm. so now if you would do this, thus, and that, yep. then now I can experience yep. the same things that you are experiencing yep. and I won't say no all the time. Yep. And so now it's so open. It's like, this is your partner. Yeah. This is not mm -hmm. somebody that you just, mm -hmm. you know, being with occasionally, but right. I'm doing life with you. Right. So I should be able to be my authentic self yeah. and tell you the truth yes. about what I'm experiencing. Yeah. yeah and I think, sense. I think it's like so hard to talk about those things though, because we do start, we start feeling like, what you don't like you why you ask me mm -hmm. if I'm eating another piece of pizza <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm fat you know mm -hmm. and so I think that if we understand that they love us for who we are and we mm -hmm. got to keep it you can't let yourself go once you get in a relationship no yeah, you cannot that's the truth and I think that that's happens true. it's too many yeah. fine women out Man. here people look at me and say you how oh you've been married how long that's right baby I got too many fine women around me that's I exactly keep right it right yeah. You better talk right. Exactly right. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. 
Mom Didi say ain't nothing yeah. happening. I do gotta ask this though. So so we know that the the right approach is gonna be extremely unique. You talked about in the beginning of marriages, because on the other side of the camera, a lot of people are getting married and they're getting married, you know, a lot earlier. Like no matter mm -hmm. what people are saying, you know, on mainstream media, I'm seeing 22 year olds mm -hmm. that are literally saying- I was. Like, like I was 24 mm -hmm. when I got married, 25, mm -hmm. I was like 25, but they're getting married a lot younger. Yeah. First six, seven years, not good. Because of Hollywood's narrative yeah. of what marriage yeah, is, right. they're quitting without help. What made you guys stick around in some of the tough times? Now here to go the thing. Me and Kim right now, we just gonna stand on this side. <laughs> Cause we'll let you go, okay? We gonna let you go and not go. You say, what are you saying? Yeah. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> now I didn't yeah. have a problem yeah. hitting them, it was just keeping them. <laughs> But I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm in the same boat. But she I just want to know why I'm in a different stop? room yeah, now. You, I'm in a different room. I, that's now. what I'm doing now too. I you think. Know. I think. First of all, and I think it is important even before you get married that there's genuine chemistry. Mm -hmm. That like I would not just be like. You know how some people be so spiritual, they'll be like, oh, God told me. Wait a minute now, that's good. But you better make sure that you have some genuine, like, I really like this person. Because you're talking about a permanent Ugh. life decision. This is yeah. not just whatever. So I think getting other couples in your life that can have real conversations with you, not just the like, yeah, yeah I just believe God. I just prayed. Okay, bruh, but in the midnight hour... <laughs> Yeah. When you was like, I don't like you. I don't know if I want to be here or vice versa. Like, talk to me about that. Mm -hmm. So for me, having people in my life like Aditi and other people that Thank I can you. think about in my life Thank who you. were super, uh, absolutely, I love you too, baby. Come on. But you know what I mean? But I'm just saying that I could call and say, okay, girl, so yeah. did you ever feel this? Or did you ever think this? Having those kinds of authentic, real conversations, not that I don't know how to pray and believe God, but I would need real authentic conversations. And then people that were willing to talk to you about sex. Because I don't think, like, to your point, we've learned enough. Like, if you're not careful, you'll be freakier before Jesus than when you get married. Like, Come on, she that's, that's, that's cool. typically what happens. That's what I was wondering. We're what all in when you were single yeah. and now you get married and now you act like what? You're going to use your body as a weapon. But one of the things that I realized in our relationship, what kept us solid was commitment. We mm -hmm. saw commitment growing yeah. up. My parents mm. have been married for almost 75 years and his parents were married yeah. uh, probably about 70 years before his mom transitioned. And so we saw commitment. I saw commitment to the point, you know, they went through everything like fight, cuss, whatever. I wasn't raised in a Christian home, Damn. but he was. My husband never saw his parents mm. argue, wow. never saw his parents have a disagreement. Well, on the Jeez. other hand, his is at one extreme. Mine was the oh, whole other end of the spectrum, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I saw them, regardless of what they went through, they were determined to not allow divorce to be an option. And so when I, I believe if you take yeah. divorce off the table as an option, you have to yeah. fight for whatever else will make it work. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Love you more. If you take yeah. divorce off the table as an option, you have to yeah. fight for whatever else will make it work. Yeah. So because good. it was something there from the beginning. It's still yeah. there, but yeah. it's just clouded right. with everything else. And the, the sad thing about this is that yeah. people don't realize you get out of one relationship, you go into another one, and you're going to have a whole other oh, set, set of problems. A yes. yeah. set, whole other set yeah. of issues that you're going to have to work through. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you got to be determined, you know, come hell, yeah. high water, low water, no water at all. On, I'm going to yeah. stay in this relationship and I'm going to fight for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So good. So, we, so not that we got to stay here, 
But what are you guys' thoughts about love, marriage, shacking up before marriage and all of that? Because it's been an age-old thing in the church. Like, hey, we don't shack up, no sex before marriage. Now there are preachers who are coming out saying there's nothing biblically that states that this mm. is 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 a sin. Wow. Mm. Um, can we talk a little bit about that? Oh, let's mm. talk about it. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, yeah. because I'll be honest, you know, I always like to put it on the table. Um, you know, a lot of people yeah, was looking for a Proverbs 31 woman. That's <laughs> right. what they was looking for. When I got right. married, I was looking for a woman with with. Proverbs 31, 31, 28. You know, I was looking more at them that black things. Solomon's Yeah, boy. come on. You know what I'm saying? I was looking a little different. Of course, right. I wasn't the guy that I am today. Uh -huh. right. And we did not wait. You know, right. we did not wait. Uh, my mom was a little, um, ups not really upset, but she jabbed at me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you all y'all staying together? Like, yeah, okay, because mm -hmm. they've been married 50 years. Y'all mm -hmm. checking up. Okay, mm -hmm. I see what y'all doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what are you guys' thoughts um, on that? Like, yeah. test driving the car before you buy it? I'm totally against it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am. I Okay, I didn't get married a virgin, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not, this is not a judgment thing here. Mm -hmm. I didn't get married a virgin, but when I got saved, that's when I got in a relationship with Mike, right? And he was saved, I was saved. I was determined I was not going to have sex with him before marriage. And I did not have sex with How him. How long did y'all date before then? Don't even ask. Listen. <laughs> we, Three we months. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, two weeks, hell. Two no. weeks. Like she no. so hey, 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 two weeks, two weeks. Let me tell my own story. Two weeks. Let's get married. Two weeks. You wrong. You wrong. But no, really. How long? We got together in January. January. We were married April the fourth. Hey, <laughs> but I ain't wait no sixteen no, months. Because looking we at were that rock man. Uh, we were gonna live right, but I raised two virgin girls. You yeah. did do that. You it know, went viral. who were committed to keep themselves unto themselves. That's the best gift you have to give mm. somebody. And women, I believe, need to raise their standards back up again mm. and not be so free with it. Yeah. It's like me, I'm mm -hmm. the best gift you could ever have. Mm -hmm. Why well, share it amongst everybody mm -hmm. else? Now I devalue who I am. Right. And so now you're going to want me because you know I'm not going to give you what you want like everybody else would. It has to be something different right. up to me. This, I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. You could, you know, but for me, I'm not going to compromise who I am just to get you because yeah. nine, ten, nine times out of ten, you're not going to want me. So, if so I'm his, easy. I think I think you're right, and I'm teaching my sons the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, like well, I, I told my son that too, yeah. but he took after his father. Come on, somebody, <laughs> love him. But no, I've been sitting down with my children, and I'm just like my look, young boys. I'm like, hey, yeah. I, nobody told me this in the neighborhood. Right. 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 right, they told me hit as much as you can. Right, hey, what you do with her? Or what and happened? then you want to marry a virgin? Yeah, well, right. still, uh -huh. and I got experience. She's gonna be locked in forever. <laughs> Come on, that was the, that was the flaw of thinking. But I'm literally right. sitting down with my right. young boys and yeah. telling them. You might not have heard this in mainstream right. media, but you're the prize. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't have to give yourself Absolutely. to anybody. You are, you are a young Absolutely. king and yes. you can save yourself. Absolutely. And I'm telling them that. Um, my 21 year old, he's done fairly well. You know, I found out some things about a year <laughs> a year ago. I was like, oh, what? But, you know, it's okay. As it's I, okay. You know, whatever. Right. The but the life. mother too, we just trusted. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what are your thoughts? Anybody else kind of? So I would say that definitely I think people should not shack before they get married, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if it happens, I try to make sure that they know God still loves them. He, they, the guy still has a plan for them. My youngest daughter is in a relationship right now that I would, I want her to get married. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, where the old me would have been like, you better. Da, da, da. Now I've told her the word. I've trained her up in the way she should go, and I still make sure that I that I distribute grace and love mm -hmm. to her because I've learned that if I condemn her, it pushes her away. Absolutely, you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I, that is the the will of God is that she would get married. But I've also had to learn to respect her. And then also respect her fiance because when I was not doing it, I was losing her. Mm -hmm. And it was making him look at the church like you guys are just judgmental right. and I'm not going to be accepted. Am I not valuable? So I had to kind of take a different approach mm -hmm. to her. And then also it made me not lower the standard, but it made me say, let me just demonstrate what I believe God wants you to do and then love them right where they are. And then prayerfully they wake up and have a revelation. They want to get married, but they want this like extravagant situation, which I'm not saying God won't do it. I would like for her to do it privately, mm -hmm. but I'm also respecting her as an adult 
And that's been probably the most challenging thing, but it's helping me not just with her, but with people at large. And they, so you talked a little bit about your children and I'm glad you brought that up. How, how different is it raising children in this age mm. versus how you guys were raised? Cause I like, I'm kind of like you. I went to church on Sunday. That's it. It wasn't nothing else reflecting mm -hmm. church Monday through Friday. <laughs> I was singing gospel songs on Sunday in the choir and Jodeci on Monday. <laughs> and I was with somebody else on Tuesday. I was having a good time. So I didn't grow up in this house where you can't do this, you can't do that. I had total freedom to move the way we wanted. So I had to be home at a certain yeah. time. But it seems as if you guys grew up kind of in a background where church was something that was sacred. It was something that we were just doing. Yeah. So how did you all choose to raise your children differently? You know, for me, my sons let me know quick. I'm grown. <laughs> I'll be hey, trying man, to give my opinion to them. They'll be like, girl, listen, I am grown. Nobody asks you. So I don't know if it's different raising boys than girls, but mm -hmm. I raised them the best way I could and let them figure it out. They both are doing whatever they want to do. And yeah. I'm just praying mama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So coaching yeah. from the sideline yes. versus being yeah. in the... Because I see some parents I'm like, there. hey, don't wait. Yeah. Nope, no, I'm the not Lord one said, of those. The Lord said. Yeah. And and my parents years. were like yeah. that and I, I ran. Like yeah, yeah. You, I don't. Run. I've learned that Influence is better yeah. than control because Pause right quick. You said what? Say influence what? is better, better than control. Put that in the chat for yeah. me real quick. Influence. So good. Like I just really feel like Holy Spirit just wanted like yes. like just yep. because because of the news, because of what you see on social yeah. media, because of your own personal traumas and fears, we want to lower everything yeah. and step in God's place. Yes. yes. But influence. Influence is better than control because control only lasts as long as you can see me. Yes. Yeah. But influence will go places that I can't go Listen. with you. Mm -hmm. You will think Listen. about what I said. Mm. That. That part. And you know, it's kind of hard being a parent too, because especially a divorced parent, mm. because they're like, well, you and dad didn't make it. So why should I walk the same line as you did? Mm -hmm. And so now the life that I'm living, they're getting to watch their mama literally pour out to the world and loving people back to life. And the one thing I've learned with kids is influence mm -hmm. is so much better than yep. control. Yeah. And I just, I pray yep. for them, man. Yeah. That's love. So, you know, because I'm raising, I'm raising small children. Mm -hmm. And we're you know, praying for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah I have my days are over with that. <laughs> and yeah. they're good looking kids. Yeah, like yeah. all of my like especially this Peyton, he has all these muscles and stuff. And like now the girls are calling the phone or whatever. Yes, they are. And I just asked the Lord, I just said, I said, okay, God, like, how do I steward this part correctly? Yeah. And and he he showed me how to be like extremely mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. So even last night I was um I, I I raised my voice a little too much at Paisley because she wouldn't put the strawberry juice down and she's not supposed to she's a, she's allergic to it. So I'm like Paisley no, but we do devotion every night. And so I sat mm -hmm. there and I was doing our highs and lows. We do lows and highs every night. Mm -hmm. And 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 I said come here baby. I said I want to apologize for raising you know, for raising oh, my voice wow. at you. Okay. And then it was like, Holy Spirit said that they hadn't seen mm -hmm. somebody who, who would that. come back because oh, yeah. Holy Spirit was bothering me. Absolutely. Like, like you said that wrong. Yeah. It was just a juice. Yeah. Who's to say that she won't, will we'll even break exactly. out, but you were so afraid mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, and so I apologize. Yeah. So yeah. like, just talk, if we can be a little practical in the influence part, yeah. because mm -hmm. you know, some things aren't said. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I can influence you by, now you don't do this, you no, don't do that. That's no, what I'm doing. Right. But how do you guys influence? Or helicopter yeah, no, parent. That, yeah, don't be a helicopter yeah. parent. No. no, really, I think developing a relationship with your children. I wrote a book. I mean, shameless plug. Come on, book. <laughs> you know I wrote a book. <laughs> Put it on the lower thirds, Katie, yes. right there. Not too big to bow. Not too, Not too big, big to bow. bow. Come yeah, on. God gave me that book because I remember when Breland was like eight years old and Breland was very defiant. I mean, just strong, like... Ooh, she just would just try every nerve in me mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand it. And so I tried to break that out of her. I mean, spanking her, <laughs> punishing her, but nothing ever moved her. And so God had to get me. I remember like it was yesterday. Holy Spirit said, you are about to destroy something in her Come that on. she will mm. need later mm. in life. Mm. Mm. I had to go That's and it. apologize mm. to an eight year old. That's and so she good. remembers the story. Yeah. I had to apologize to her. I said, hey, look, I've been doing this thing wrong. I apologize. God showed me mm. that you're going to be something great. 
great later mm. in I life, love it. right? Yeah. And now this girl is using her voice yes. killing to it. speak prophetically yes. to yeah. whomever. I'm talking about beating us up. Yeah, yeah, come on. But <laughs> yeah. I was I wasn't like yeah. that. I was raised to be intimidated. I yeah. was, you know, shy, if you will. Well, at least I thought I was, but that was the environment that shaped me, right? Yeah. And so I had to get out of that. But I was about to create another me, and yeah. I didn't want that yeah. for her. And so I developed a relationship. I bowed. That mm -hmm. book talks about me getting down on her level and now leading her from a different place, not yeah. standing so up here good. because she yeah. couldn't identify with yeah. me up here, but she could identify me with me on her level. And yeah. so I said, OK, just follow me now. You, I don't mind you saying what you just said, but say it like this. Yeah, yeah. so then that's you start, the influence. Now, now you know you see us. We're like best friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. she gonna ride for us. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. like a best so basically, y'all yeah. are just telling us it's important to be close to the Holy Spirit because yeah. both of you yeah. got checked. Yeah, yeah. You got checked yeah. for and real, and make them your friend. Yeah. Right, you know exactly. we talk about Jesus as a friend of yeah. mine. We sing that yeah. yeah, we can't be that's friends what, with our children. Yeah. Listen, can I, I almost threw my glasses. Right <laughs> They got on me. So I'm on radio and I'm telling them, I was like, unlike mo most parents evidently, yeah. my children are my friend. Yeah. So we sing this song. I'm a friend of God. He yeah. calls me friend. Yeah. So you mean to tell me I can't be friends with my, yeah. ch my children? That's Here's so the thing. Good. Many mm. of you all are mm. not good, yeah. good friends because yeah. I'm going to check my friend when he or she nice. is out of line. I'm going to lead him in the right direction. Yeah. If he running around with habits, hurts and hangups, yeah. I'm attempting to help him. I'm yeah. going to do the same thing mm. with my children. Yeah. But they know I'm coming from a heart posture yes. that says I love you. And so the reason why good. I'm so stern is because mm. I love you and I don't want to see Absolutely. you Go, like I've been there already. I'm from the yeah. neighborhood, bro. Yeah. You ain't gotta pretend. Right, <laughs> you, right. You, right. you gotta play room and exactly. a flow. You ain't gotta be hard. Like exactly. what you this is not what we do. Yeah. And so how important is it now? Like, and maybe not sticking on the um, not maybe not sticking on just you know our children, but how important is friendships? It's an age old saying that if you show mm. me your friends, oh, yeah. I'll mm. show you your futures. Mm -hmm. How have you all this made strong borders and mm -hmm. boundaries for those people who are attempting to get in the circle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because That's when you get good. to a certain level of influence. Influence, yeah. Everybody wants to be close. Yeah. Like, how do you set mm -hmm. up your borders for new friends to come mm -hmm. into your to your circle? That is. So good. We just snatched each other. Yeah. I don't let them talk. It's like yeah. you yeah. gonna be my friend. You gonna be my friend. Yeah. And we literally go on vacations together, so yeah. we are very intentional. Yeah. And when you get really healthy friends yeah. like these girls in your life, you notice the ones that are not good. You yeah. just don't even there's you don't have time to even pacify yeah. it because mm -hmm. you're too busy pouring into the ones that are good. Yeah. I remember one time I was on vacation with them and I said something, I'm talking to Angelo and I was saying something and she looked at me and she grabbed me. She says, you stop telling him what to do. Mm. So at the whole time that I've been dating, <laughs> my friends will call me out. So you got to get yeah. some friends like that, that really love you. Mm -hmm. And we have healthy yeah. vacations. Yes. We do ministry together. Yeah. We got each other's backs. Yeah. They're here right now at, we're here at Bloom Conference with Happy yeah. Dollar. Yeah. You got to get some friends mm -hmm. that you're proud mm -hmm. to yeah. be in their They said they circle. prophesied you was going to have a black man. They did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, they we were on Shatter. We were serious. on Shatter yeah. when... The woman of God. Yes, <laughs> all of them. When we were on Shatter yeah. four, five years ago, and I was walking through yet another thing, and I remember these ladies said, Cam, you just need a black brother. Yep. <laughs> sure did. And look, they prophesied him right yeah, on right. into my life. Yeah, shout out to Angelo. I love we you, love Angelo. Yeah. I love Friends you, Friends are important, though. I yeah. think you have to set those boundaries by mm -hmm. having open and honest discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But then we are all so fulfilled yeah. in life yeah. that we don't have the normal kind yeah. of expectations mm -hmm. that most yeah. relationships have. It's, it's like, okay, you can't call me or you never call me. I'm good. Yeah. But I still love you. And then when we get together, it's, it's like, like never we've missed never a missed a beat. Missed a beat. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, that's, that's when like, you know it's a God yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. But I think everyone is an individual. If you become yeah. whole, if you yeah. become fulfilled yeah. in life, yeah. you won't, it's like, I, I'm not yeah. looking for something yeah. from you other Absolutely. than a real loving relationship. And God did not put you on this earth not to have relationships. Mm. Yeah. Anytime he ever does elevation in your life, anytime mm. he's ever taken you to another season, mm -hmm. he always includes people. Every time. And so if you don't trust people, Every time. you're doing life all by yourself. Every time. You ain't got nobody pushing you to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so as God is elevating you and separating yeah. you from some people, he's bringing some other people into your life. To life so yeah. where the enemy gets you is he makes you feel like, I can't trust anybody. Yeah. And that season broke me. Yeah. This new season's gonna have people to be able to help you yeah. to that next level. Yeah. And so yeah. 
Yeah. Gotta open your think, heart. And it. I think women, that was, that was so good. I think women really have to be careful in that because sometimes you get a point, I don't trust you. I don't trust women. Yeah. Baby, you're going to hear that all the time. Oh, you, yes. you got, you're going to, you got to ask Holy Spirit and God will send women to you that are That's in That's because place. they don't trust themselves. Yes. Yeah. I well, did that for Well, then you said it. I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, what's the truth? Because we yeah, will say whatever you can't yeah. say. Come on. And you, gotta, and, you gotta have a, and you gotta have a safe space. Because the stuff you're gonna need to be able to say to a woman that as close as I am with Ben is some conversations I need to just have with another woman. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I gotta be friends with somebody who I don't always have to be on. I don't always have to be together. I called Didi about, I don't know, a month or two ago, bonded on my head, crying profusely in the middle of the night, it was about two o'clock in the morning, but I've never heard it. Like you gotta be mm -hmm. able to say things. I gotta be able to say things to Kim and she won't even bring it back up unless I, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like you gotta have women that you can, it's so important because in those moments where you feel most vulnerable and where you feel the weakest, like if God don't come in here and help me right now, then I can't make no promises. You know, mm. you got to have people in your life at that moment that can speak to your spirit and not your flesh. Mm -hmm. Shoot, yeah, man. Because if you and don't, Dr. Didi, Dr. Didi is that for I think both of us. Oh, yeah, because even when I got on the cancel culture. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I did, like Paula White's post or something. And I got on the cancel culture. Canceled? I did. I got on the cancel right. culture. And Dee Dee calls me and she says, don't say a word. She said, you just yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Your heart's well. You meant well. Yeah. So you got to have people, yeah. too, that talk well, you I'm off the, the ledge. I'm the mother in the group. You she know, is. I think all of us have she positions. No, I, know, like, I know you the mother. You know? I was in the Bahamas with them, and it was people in the grocery store like, my, Mama D, I went to she church does. today. She will call she us out. went to nail church. <laughs> Ain't going no <laughs> because like it's five of us on this chatter show, the new chatter show that's coming out, you know, on streaming. No, it's, it's going to be streaming, streaming on Merch TV. In, in, yeah. in the black. In the black, black right? Because okay. it's Merch, Merch TV, TV, but it streams yeah. on in, in the, the black. black. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's five of us. And when we all get together, we really have good, authentic conversations and we challenge each other. You mm -hmm. know, most people look at challenges as something negative, like, oh, mm -hmm. she's a challenge. Yeah. She's this. No, but they challenge us to grow. Yeah. I think every relationship you get yeah. in should challenge yes, you. Yes, exactly. or they're boring. Challenge you to be exactly. better. Challenge you to grow. Yes. So I'm the mother. I think Jewel is like the baby in the mm -hmm. family. Uh, Kim is like the middle child. Kim is the middle <laughs> Monique is what? Serious. Monique, Monique is a serious woman. Yeah, Monique, Monique is a grown woman. Y'all made me scared of Monique. I ain't met oh, her. She's oh, a businesswoman. Monique think. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. When I tell her you she's a strong... Yeah. Monique, I want to meet you. They said yeah. you're serious. Monique yes. is I'm going to wear a suit. She's a serious. And she's yes. single, I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm in the healing process. <laughs> He's in the healing process. No, he's in the healing process. <laughs> Praise, the Lord. Him, no. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, and then you have Holly. And Holly's you know, our Kojic. Holly is, yeah. she, she really don't know if she's saved or not. No, <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell y'all what, what uh, Sister Holly Carter did. I'm, at, I'm at the Super Bowl. Um, said in the Tiner, he's the host and um, and Miss Arnold is the co-host, and and then I'm the host of the red carpet. It's a big thing. Everybody's out. We got our good suits on. You know, we're doing our thing. Earth, wind, and fire go past. Hey, brother. Hey, how you doing? Hey, brother. I'm. Oh yeah. Um. So many other actors and actresses, and I got you know somebody there who who works for another radio station, and then I see Doctor. I'm like, here go one of us. This mainstream. I'm like, here go one of us right here. I ain't seen nobody but Mary Mary and Doctor Holly. That's all that's on the carpet. This mainstream. You know what I mean? I, Mary Mary, hey, why? I like Erica Campbell, Tina Campbell. Love you guys to life. They have this, this, this going on. It's cool. Dr. Holly came past. Willie. I said, what? Come here. I've been down. Tell them about my network. <sighs> Merge. Make sure you shout out the Merge Network. And my daughter, she got a new clothing See, line, Merge. too. Make she sure that you do. She don't play about them two things. I, 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 I was like, okay, she I'm going to put it in, put it in the phone and say Listen. it. When she, I'm Listen. talking about she went out there. I was like, it's Merge TV. <laughs> Make sure you stream. <laughs> Every time I and see her number now. Uh, 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 yeah. right? The whole time. Uh, right, right. But she is such an assertive woman. Uh, yeah, who, yeah, when yeah. she sees it, she's yeah, going yeah, for it. And I, I mean, can but appreciate that. We all got together. Yeah. 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 She was at one of my women's conferences. Right. I put on God's Glamorous Girls. Yep. And I'm, I was trying to figure out maybe about six years ago. Yep. And she attended. And she saw a panel. We had a yep. panel of women. I think Jewel was on the mm -hmm. panel. And she was like, oh, my God, we need to do this. 
And mm-hmm. so she called me and asked, and your boy came up with the name Chatter. I just need you to know that. Yes, yeah, he y'all are doing it. Chatter. We got, we got, we let him in there a little bit, gave us a <laughs> Thank name. You. But that's how it, this whole thing started yeah. because Holly was yeah. so, you know, assertive. You know, she mm-hmm. was after it to make sure mm-hmm. that we pull something together, mm-hmm. you know, that would demonstrate yep. strong women yep. that don't have to compromise, yep. that mm. really love God, exactly. but also knows how to yeah. cross over yeah. to mm. grab you and pull you back right. yeah. in. You, you know, know, so it. speaking of the name Chatter, mm-hmm. on social media, there's a lot of chatter. Yeah. Like there are women now who are choosing to make social media a safe place to share intimate relational Man, secrets. Man, it's bad. Like I just seen a girl on there the other day. I forgot her name, but Can she I was on she was on <laughs> hell I don't know don't do it on this platform <laughs> glory to God I want to help you get the name right <laughs> yeah but no, no I, just, I don't have to know I don't you know what I ain't canceling nobody but my question <laughs> is my question is now like you know you guys are three very not in no disrespect but you all have strong opinions on certain mm-hmm. subjects especially in relationships is social media a safe place to share your grievances absolutely not in your relationship no. no i don't think so at all no. i think i think i think that it fuels the wrong message like social media everything that happens in your life is not for social media like some things need to be private, especially if you have a relationship, you're in a marriage. Like I, I have no idea why you're on there talking about intimate, detailed things that ultimately will emasculate the man. That's not helping mm-hmm. him better. Even if he's guilty of mm-hmm. everything, I'm like, where's the coverage? Like at the end of the day, I would always want Ben to cover me. I would mm-hmm. always want to cover him. Well, that's what because love does. That's what love but is. But it's so sad because so, it's even happening in the church. I mean, they yeah. are divorced and husbands and wives are divorced and pastors and they're just taking it to social media. Y'all, when I walked through my divorce, God said, don't you say a word. Let your fruit you, not you, live your lies. Come I on. never said a word yeah. because the Bible says that the same amount of judgment that you give, you're going to receive. Absolutely. So if you Come take on, bring someone's it to the word, character, man, if yeah. you, there's a lady right now that just made a ton of buku of money where people yeah. sat for 50 episodes and listened to her tear somebody down. Yeah. And I just feel sorry for her because yeah. the same amount of right. judgment, Absolutely. you just took this man's right. life. Exactly. Even if you hate him, yeah. exactly. you just took his life. But you yeah. said you didn't. You said you did it in the name of my truth. But your truth don't have to be for everybody. Right. Right. You gotta shut your mouth. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. You, you gotta show it, mouth. you reap it. Right. Be not deceived. Yeah. God is not mocked right. whatsoever. A man yeah. so if that's shell, he yeah. also reap. And yeah. we don't get it. So I don't say anything that I don't want to reap. Me neither. I don't yeah. do anything Gosh, that neither. I don't want to reap. Me neither. You sat there and, and dig the pit for him. Ooh, hate to stop you, change the scenery and the energy, but you ain't been obedient. You know how I know? Because you ain't subscribed. You ain't left no comment. You ain't shared this with nobody. Do it right now. Now back to the show. I, now, do it. Good. Back to the show. Flat out. And I'm talking, and talking millions about- and millions and millions oh, yeah. of people have watched 50 episodes. Absolutely. Yeah. I even went and tried to watch one just to see what it's about. I'm like, imagine the world that we are so miserable yep. th- in our own lives mm-hmm. yep. that we see someone else's life miserable and we get lost in mm-hmm. the episodes because it makes us feel better about I- the enemy Where comes to are. steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. And the way he does yep. it is through nonsense like that. Now, and you never message, fix your mess. And what message is that sending to your children? Mm-hmm. To the mm. family? Like, what? Like why? Because whatever you felt, that could have been between you and a friend. And a it's still their daddy. Or something else. Still their mama. But you made it widespread. So yeah. now he probably going to have to go through some kind of serious therapy just to be able to deal with with that level of attention, you say he said it's okay, but I don't believe it because even if he did, that was the broken him saying that. No mm-hmm. man wants that kind of exposure about everything down. To and his you ain't never get parts. married again because ain't no man gonna ever trust no. you. No. I don't care if you are fine with the BDL. I don't care how snatched you are. I don't care. I'm going to Google your name. Ain't no man gonna ever trust you. Lord, she gonna tell it. That's right. So, so what is what is the so here's the thing, because you guys have such a strong foundation in Jesus, mm-hmm. you have the fundamental tools to roll out grief correctly. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of this camera, there are people who grew up with a grandmama who, you know, they were 35 years old. Granny was dropping them off over somebody else's house Come to go on. to the club. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes just because, you know, I was blessed. I was adopted by very um 
older, you know, they were older, they were seasoned. While yeah. other people was going out, mm -hmm. hell, my mom was like, hell, my, my hip don't do all that no more. Hell, when I got you, I knew it was over. That's why I waited so long, you know? And that's the way she, she was. But to those people who don't understand that social media is not a place to share grief, what are some options they have to get that type of information out that can be a lot more healthy? They need to go to counseling yes. and talk to somebody. Get you a good community of friends mm. that will surround you, yeah. that will give you wise counsel. Mm. Like we are around each yeah. other. We protect mm. us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We watch over yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and so yeah. you got to get you some good friends that yeah. you can talk to without blasting somebody on social media. Because it's making yeah. you look bad. It makes yeah. you look bad. Y'all listen to me. I don't care how much they hurt you. Trying to hurt them back is doing nothing but making you look so bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to therapy. Yeah. Get you in a get a good mentor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get a good mentor. I believe that God sends voices in your lives for certain seasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find that voice that speaks to you. You yeah. may never meet them, right. but they are every day in your ear telling you something. Yeah, good, help you yeah. Yeah. So find peace. Go for peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can't expect that. Oh, okay. I want to be this big leader. I want to be this great leader. I want to influence all these people. But you mismanaging your your private life, okay. I'm not following you nowhere. Heck no. Because where you from? You from LA? Zone? I'm from Detroit. Man, you from the city? I knew I felt that 313 in them. What's up? Like when you said that right there, when her hand did this uh -huh. one right here. Like, uh -huh. Where you from? No, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I had yeah, a no, but for real, like sometimes people be like, oh, I want, I have this, I have this, you know, because everybody's a coach, everybody has courses, everybody yeah. has all that, and like follow me this, but I'm watching how you manage your private Man. life and yes. your friends or your marriage, or your relationship. And so if you would dog her out and drag her, or drag him or your husband, what does that say about me as a friend? I, oh, I you can't get to be close drugged. To oh, you. yeah. You're going to be drugged. I think it's so crazy, though, how we think that we have to make announcements to a bunch of people in a free app. We don't, don't even, even know, know us. Know. Why right. you got to go tell people we getting divorced? Nobody cares. Who cares? Right. Like, well, we, people do care. Right. But they care for the wrong reasons. Your kids now are going to yeah, have to go back. Right. And, and then you talk. Yeah. There's no reason to make yeah, comments. But Just change your name and be happy. But you got to know. Change your name and be happy. But people put that stuff up. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just leaving it alone. Oh. I'm just leaving it alone. Kid. But you know, we put stuff you're a up strong like that. Yes, yeah, you're strong. Woman. And I got a strong Not alpha, me, too. But people put stuff up mm. like that. Don't get this one started. I'm I know. Don't, don't. Hit Kim here. Here, Kim. Hit that bell for therapy. That's therapy. There you go. Praise the Lord. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but you know, people post and people share things because that's their way of punishing the, the other person. Other person. Yeah. Right. And they don't realize that it's punishing them. Right. right? And that's why we don't forgive yeah. we don't, we, forgiveness is a choice it's not yeah. based upon how you feel <sighs> forgiveness yep. is a poor mm. a, a choice it's mm. like you yep. got to decide you know what i'm gonna forgive you because yep. the only person that's hurting right now is me you done gone on about your life exactly. living your best life and i'm sitting here hoping that a car will fall on your and head putting yeah. subliminal Listen. messages up there your back post he's not even looking yeah, at your he's post not even right. that that you. and nobody is taking it back to no. him and so you might and, we're well just, and we're knowing why they're why they left you <laughs> Like, oh, oh, but it's so immature to be able to look at a person's post yeah. and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's yeah. immature. Like keep whatever your messaging is. Let it be that. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to stop coming after other people like that whole cancel culture. That is crazy to me. Judge your own life. Everybody got something they working have time. on. I'm busy right. judging you. Right. <laughs> what is that? You got your right? own stuff. It might not Crazy. be that, but you got something you working on. I just yeah. don't know how somebody's so popular to you that you've never met. Because most of the people are canceling people that have never met. Like, you yeah. don't even know this person. Listen, I didn't know. I'm going to be honest with you. And here's the thing. To some of y'all, I'm not. Right? But I didn't know we had any level of fame until I went through divorce. Right? Uh, I had no idea. Yeah. Shout out to John yeah. P. Key. He called me. He said, man... What's going on, nephew? Yeah. I said, I said, oh, yeah, done got big. John P. Key on the come phone. He said, yeah. nephew, look here, let me tell you something. Keep your he mouth said, shut. Uh, you know I love you because of your heart. Yeah. Because you're one of the most genuine people I've ever met. Don't get involved in that. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, if you run low on a few nickels, I got a few dollars under the couch. Oh. And, and he got off the phone. CeCe Winans, same way. When, they, when he was going to get on the phone with her, I was nervous. I was like, uh-oh, Mama Cece probably got a word from the Lord. And whatever she say, yeah. I'm probably going to have to do it. And she said, follow God. Come on. No matter what, follow God. Cry like a baby. Come on. And 
uh, to anybody who ever went through public scrutiny Man. and issues, um, I realize now that I could never be this without that. And so what God was attempting to break so me from was public opinion of yeah, what he was so calling me to right. do. Because sometimes really. I would modify right. the way God wanted me to, mm-hmm. to, yeah. to, to, be, exactly. to be like, but the culture, and I don't yeah. want to offend and all this. So now when God yeah. say do something, I'm going to be on the backside. This is how this show came about. Why would you come up with a show and you have this, this, and this? Because he said so. Listen. Mm -hmm. Period. Because he said so. And we just going to move like that. Why Mm -hmm. are you touching these topics? I did one about um, transgender and I brought a brought a couple in and they called me everything but a child mm-hmm. of God but I wanted to be a lot more educated because Absolutely. I'm called to win some Absolutely. And, and, and newsflash the same look, look mm-hmm. um, the, the, the same they that you talked about is now developing a relationship See, with God because yeah. there was a loving conversation come to come on. Yeah. but you know I'll be that for you yeah. but when you get hurt in such a manner God never yeah. ever mismanages Absolutely. a pain or a hurt Absolutely. and so Absolutely. to those of you on the other side of the ca- camera like he's yeah. Never mismanage a hurt. Yeah. Um, and and I know we got to wrap it up, but you guys have been in the public eye for a very, very long time. Like, to be honest, um, I seen a picture of you and my friend. Oh, so Dr. Dr. Freeman is one of my my brothers. I love him a lot. Like, I don't even know how God put us together. Didn't even know he was a minister. You know how you meet people? Yeah, yeah, and I was right. like, this your church? Man, cool church. Anyway, man, I love you, man, and this, that, and another. And then come to find out, everybody, I said, man, you famous. <laughs> He's like, no, you famous. <laughs> you know? And so we have a loving contest. But you guys have been in the public eye for so long. Like, how do you manage the platform without letting the outside church chatter get on the inside of you? Like, yeah. what borders or boundaries do you, Like, how do you get keep that chatter out? Because, yeah. baby, you say just about everything. Oh. I know you're free. This one here is free. She done I said don't everything. I care what y'all think about me. She done said everything but the, but the cuss word on the internet. But You know what? I think for me, I did care. Like, I struggled a long time with people pleasing. And, and when I walked through my divorce... I was like, man, these people don't care. Christians are some of the only people that will kill their wounded. Mm -hmm. And it just made me want to go harder. It made me want to get free. You told me when I was on Preachers of Atlanta, you said, I'm going to give you some of the best advice you'll ever have. Don't Don't read read the the comments. comments. I don't read the comments. And I realized that, man, there must be something really awesome Mm. about me because (laughs) I'm not even in Starbucks and y'all talking about me. (laughs) That's like special. And so I look at it that way. And when I was getting free from people, I lay hands on myself every day and I'll say, Lord, let me get free from what people think about me because it still hurts. You're still human, but don't let me ever settle in a place mm. where I won't let you use me. Yeah. And I'll, there are 8 billion people in this world and we'll mm. stare at the 10 that got together to mm. throw the stones at you. Mm. And so I just, I make sure every day I'm like, man, Lord, let me love me like the yeah. haters love me. Yeah. Let me love me because like something, yeah, because there's something good. Yeah. yeah, There's something good about me good. that they would sit and talk about me when I'm not even in the room. People don't even know me. Y'all are really mm. taking it to social media. Like, why do yeah. you even care? Yeah. And yeah. so I just stay focused. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you've been married to Ben Tank. How long? We've been married 23 years. 23, the yes. Jordan year. Come on. Yeah, I know. That's right? a Jordan yeah, year. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so and, and of course, he's been in the public eye for years mm-hmm. and years. And, you know, now the tables are not necessarily turning, but now mm-hmm. you're kind of mm-hmm. moving into that. And you look mm-hmm. amazing. Like, Thank God you. has preserved you for such a time as this. 54. Come on, 54. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. How old are you? Girl, I never tell. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. She 54. Yeah. 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 Black don't cry. It doesn't. Black don't cry. I just want to tell about my friends how beautiful they are. So how do you, how do you, like, what is the the healthy way of kind of the changing of the guard? I was on the phone with my mm. dear brother, yeah. um, um, Dr. Freeman, and he was like, he was smiling. And you could tell, like, this time we on the phone, he's smiling. He said, man, Dee Dee running all around the she world. Is. <laughs> and he said, I, Holy Spirit's okay. Um, he said, yeah, okay, cool. I got peace on it. He said, you know, she came in and she said, she asked him, how do you feel oh, wow. now that they um, calling yeah. me now a lot more oh. than they, you know what I'm saying, calling me? He said, man, he said, man, you know how we, you know how we are, man. Yeah. He said, man, that touched my heart so much, man, yeah. she that she would even consider <laughs> yeah. to yeah. think of me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we just had a, we had a pause and yeah. I was like. You know my crazy self. I said, yeah. Lord, please send me a woman who will consider, <laughs> yes. consider me like that. She so, does. Yeah. So how, like, is there, like, now that the changing of the guard, what strategies are you using to make yeah. sure that he's built up? Because traditionally for a while, yeah. you know, Ben is the one that they, right. yeah. you know, that's him, right, you know? Right, right, right. So, so what do you all do? I think, like, um, 
Ben came into my life in a very like vulnerable stage. I had gone through a divorce and I had my baby girl was two years old and he came in. He was like a knight in shining armor. He asked me first time he saw me, he said, you must be the full woman I've ever seen. You're supposed to be my wife. So that was a prayer because I didn't want to date. I was standing on Esther. So that was huge for me. And I was living in my own condo. And we and we moved into, he had me pick out our first home. It was 4,400 square feet. And he became this amazing father to Cyrene. And really the first like four years I didn't work. I just ran around with him and I saw faith. I live good with my parents, but living with him, flying private, it was like he exposed me to a whole nother world. So I, I had a strong foundation of prayer because I was up under uh, Wayne T. Jackson him and his wife for years. And so I really understood prayer, understood faith, but Ben exposed me. He like, he demonstrated private aviation, flying all over, you know, sitting at the front row of conferences with people that I didn't know Bishop Jakes before then. I didn't know the Freemans before then. I didn't know the dollars before them. He, he brought me into all those rooms. So I think having that foundation that he laid, like I'll never forget that he came into my life at a very pivotal time and really became that guy. So um, and I think having really good friends that keep you sober, like I don't, I'm grateful for all the lights, but at the end of the day, I know that it was the foundation of love and faith that really produced all that. It wasn't mm-hmm. I love because that. of me. It was really because of Jesus and his grace using my husband in that area in my life. So my honor to him is like, he's still a really great guy and to never forget. And the fact that he loves me the way that he loves me even to this day. Mm -hmm. I went through some things, I think last quarter coming into the first of this year, and I exposed another level of vulnerability to him that he managed. At first it was hard, but the way he managed me allowed the little girl in me to to heal. heal. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. because I ran up on some trauma that happened when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And the way he managed that, I always love him. Come on. And so it makes me always want to celebrate him. It makes me want to go home to him and make wild love to him. (laughs) You know, seriously, it makes me want to let it wants. It makes me want to make sure that he knows that you're a priority. Yeah, that's good. And everything else is like the fruit. But you are the root of this fruit that has been produced. God, I love that. And I had to and I had to I had to go back. I had to. Holy Spirit allowed me to go back and fall in love with him again. Yeah. Where I felt like that was being challenged. Mm. But I had to allow, well, I had to first get vulnerable with him. And he saw me cry in ways he had not. He's like, I don't know this girl. Mm. And I said, well, if you would allow me the space, I can go in deeper and give me space. You know, because he's like, what do I need to do? Give me space. I, I, said, just, I said, just let I me it. figure mm. it out. And um, and he did. And so that that level of safety and that level of protection mm. and because and, and, at first it was like he was, you know, debating. And I'm like, mm-hmm. stop debating. Let me. I'm a little girl right now. I'm not Jewel. I'm not doctor. I'm not none of that. I'm not the CEO. I'm not the founder. I feel broken and I feel like a little girl. And wow. I need to know that you can handle this. Because you see me strong, and he is life. so that. Yeah, exactly. his presence is yeah. so that. Mm-hmm. So good. he's pretty amazing. Yeah, he yeah. is. So yeah. I, you know, I, I got what made what triggered you to discover that nineteen year old girl, yeah. and then how did you explain that to him? Because I I heard what you said. Because mm-hmm. we men like mm-hmm. something wrong with my girl. Like mm-hmm. here go the thing. If you with me, I don't play about you. Yeah, I, I don't play about you. I don't care what it is. What, how were you able to communicate that to him to give him the part posture to serve you correctly? It was pressure. And me feeling like I had to fix it. Mm. Ministry, money, it was pressure. And so then once I explained, because he didn't know, That's it had been had. building up. Mm-hmm. And so then when I started having cracks, in my business and had to rebuild, I said, this is how I feel. And he had gotten so used to me being successful Mm -hmm. that strong. Yeah. He got so used to me being successful that I don't even think he realized everything that I was doing. I was telling him, but I don't think he really was listening. Mm -hmm. And then he like, Oh, cause I was like, I, I walk away from everything. I said, I can't. Mm 
I said, because this is bringing me back to when daddy lost everything. And I said, and I feel like these are the changes that we need to make and we need to make them now. And um, and I think then after that, he was like, OK, I see. And I said, I'm turning all of this over to you. Wow. And so now you can figure it out because my strength is management and multiplication. I said, I'm turning it all over to you. And I'm going to let you figure it out. And when I did that and I watched him, he said, well, how much time are you giving me? Because <laughs> I know you're coming back at some point. I mean, when I look at the clock, how much time I got? That is a logical man explanation, too. Yeah. So how long you need to break for? Jesus. Well, I told him I don't know. I got to yeah. let me heal. Amen. Let me see what this looks like. Let me see that this can. And so as I saw him, because at first, you know, he retreated and was like, Okay, fine. I was like, that's not the posture. Yeah. And so then, Holy, then he came back. He said, you know what? I'm sorry. Because I realized you let me into some spaces yeah. that I didn't even know that I had. Because I'm, I'm not a whiner. No, you're I'm not, not a crier. I'm not none of that. You're from Detroit. So. I'm from Detroit. Yeah, I'm straight <laughs> gangster. Be yeah, about yeah, What's up? Have, what's up? What up, though? So <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. And so then it's like, oh, there's a little girl that wants to be covered and who feels unprotected. And I didn't realize I was there, but I was there. So then once I started seeing him and I told him, I said, the only thing I need you to do is be the best version of yourself. Yeah. I said, if you could do that, I said, cause I'm focusing on this and this is what I'm doing. And so once he started doing that and then he started like giving me these massages at night cause I was like heavy. And I get up at three o'clock in the morning and come downstairs and, and pray. I was like, He's like, you're getting out of bed? I'm like, yeah, because I need to just figure some stuff out. And um, and so when I did that and I started seeing the king in him that I Damn. needed and God started reminding me of some stuff. And then God also helped me to take responsibility, too. That's good, you. Dang. You so, so good. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a grown man and I got on skinny pants. I cannot cry the way yeah. I want to right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way I'm doing that in front of all these yeah. women the way they're doing. Man. But you know, I think you know, I think it's uh, I think this represents what chatter represents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. authentic yeah. conversations that yeah. that require um, authentic explanations. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just not an, another show where everybody is singing the hallelujah chorus, and then it's not another mm -hmm. show that's saying, "Hey, it's the bad girls club where we just fighting everything." Mm -hmm. I think these are genuine women who have chosen to share yeah. their vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. their truths, and then also giving like logical, yeah. truthful, yeah. Mm -hmm. tangible solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so funny you said that I was in therapy yesterday, um, and you know, I'm, I'm in a very, very good place. And I talked about the adoption and he made me, um, he made me go back to birth mm. and my mom giving mm. birth to me, hearing her heartbeat, mm. hearing her talk mm. from the womb, like mm. hearing her talk, hearing her uh, move around, hearing her mm. sing, hearing her shower, hearing mm. her cook, just all of these different mm. things. And then coming out of the womb, the umbilical cord being cut, and they take me away and never lay her again. And I never heard her voice again. Oh, mm. my gosh. What did that do to you? Mm -hmm. And I had to sit and I realized, like, mm -hmm. that was messed up. Yeah. yeah. And and for the first mm -hmm. time in all this adoption stuff, because I'm, like, mm -hmm. overly optimistic. It's a beautiful story. I was like, I'm really angry with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so even today, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I have to do this. I have obligations. Mm -hmm. I have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, okay, God, I got to schedule a time mm -hmm. to really sit with sit what's with going that. on before mm -hmm. I attempt to bring anybody else mm -hmm. into my fold. Because I mm -hmm. could, although there are a lot of different problems that other people may have done. Mm -hmm. I've taken responsibility for what I've done. But there mm -hmm. may be a primal wound mm -hmm. that I haven't oh. investigated. Mm -hmm. yeah. because, because of the desire to be the best husband that mm -hmm. I could ever be, wow. the desire to be the right. best faithful man that I could ever right. be, I now have to investigate the effects mm -hmm. yeah. of not yeah. having skin to skin with a mother Absolutely. when I, I was born. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, maybe on the other side of the camera, you don't necessarily understand why you respond to certain things. There yeah. may be certain things on the inside of you that are a residual effect of how you were raised and how you were born and how you were brought into this world. And that's why I think it's so important that you cut the chatter from 
from your life that really feeds what the enemy attempted to give you mm. as a child. Like he planted a seed and he wanted to kill, steal and destroy. Mm. But the unique part about him is not like, you know, you know, me and sis, we from St. Louis and Detroit. We want to kill, steal and destroy. It's going to happen in a minute. OK, <laughs> we come to holler at you today. You know what I'm saying? If you want to know, I'm coming to your hello. I'm coming to your house today. The, de- the, the, the enemy don't work like that. Mm. He plants seed early, seeds early because he knows the goal of God for your life. Yeah. And so what I want to challenge everybody under the sound of my voice to do now is I want you to evaluate some of the wounds that you may have had that are showing yeah. up in your adult life. Sometimes it don't happen until you're like 40, yeah. 50. Mm-hmm. And if you're in your 30s right now, maybe it's an opportunity to create an ecosystem and a friend mm-hmm. group that kind of helps you and not only helps you with the great things that you're doing, but point out certain things that are a little peculiar for your destiny. Mm-hmm. Like that don't go there. Mm-hmm. I think we need to investigate that. Yeah. And I just believe by faith that what you heard is what you, what you seen today was what social media doesn't want to happen. Yeah. Right. Women communicating, challenging each other and being extremely yeah. authentic and vulnerable. I know that reality shows make a whole lot of money for a whole lot of different networks, but don't let that be the narrative if you have an opportunity to see Come something on, different. Right. And what you get a chance to see is this amazing show called mm-hmm. Chatter. I feel like I'm a co-host right now <laughs> with all the ladies right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but ladies, I really do honor you. Thank, Thank you. you for being open, vulnerable, hot, honest, open and transparent. And I got to say it again, you guys look amazing. Thank and uh, you. Y'all, gonna, y'all gonna tear them up. Ooh, I can't wait to see what you. God does. Chatter. Chatter's in the building. Chatter. Family, listen, do me a favor. Um, Subscribe to this channel, leave a comment. And if there was anything that touched your heart, during this conversation um don't just run to to your next thing don't let this network move you to the next thing sit in it for a minute Mm -hmm. and ask god the questions and ask him like what answers may need to to come from the conversation because i know it pricked your heart and here's the thing i don't know your metaphysical orientation i know exactly like i i bring a lot of group of people maybe you came from the pretty willie days maybe the willie mo jr show maybe you just stumbled up on this thing but i want to tell you that we serve a god that loves us not because we're so good but because he's so good And no matter where you sit right now, he'll take you exactly where you are. Like, yo, you want to come? Come on with that. And the beauty of it is that he'll take you how you are, but he won't leave you the Mm -hmm. way you are. So if you desire something greater and better, Jesus is your answer. And I know it's a lot of people who represent him in some unique ways, but maybe today you heard some authentic hearts that have challenged you to say, maybe I can do this Jesus thing if everybody ain't perfect. Listen, I thought church people were so perfect that this was going to be my retirement plan. I'll do that when I get right. Mm. The problem was yeah. I couldn't get right on my own. And the problem is you can't get right on your own. So I want to challenge you right now. And I, you know, I just kind of feel led to do this. Um, maybe like if you hear you say, Willie Mo, man, I just, you know what I'm saying? Like I get on the Jesus thing today. If that's what you want. Like I want to give you that opportunity. All I want you to do is just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I, I repent of all sins. All sins. Today, I want to make you Lord of my life. I want to make you Lord of my life. I receive Jesus today. I receive Jesus today. As my Savior. As my Savior. And I declare. And I declare. That I. That I am, am saved. saved. Family, listen, I hope you said yes. that for the first time. And listen, I don't do this that often. But this is only for my radio group. But today, text me. All right? 314-470-8514. 314-470-8514. I usually only do this for the radio show. If you said that for the first time, I got a team of people who are literally going to get that to me and we're going to get you some new information to walk you through like what you, you know, just what you, you know, just what you said yes to. A lot of times we say yes to things and we don't fully understand. And I got some people who are going to help you with that. And finally, you know, some of y'all don't believe in church. I believe that if you love your favorite basketball team, the atmosphere is already set in the stadium. OK, so it's the same with the body of Christ. I believe that it's, a, it's an atmosphere that's already charged for your restoration. So we gonna also help you find a really cool church. If one don't fit, baby, we're going to find you another. OK, and we're going to make sure that you get planted in a great church. I'm your nephew, Willie Mo Jr. I love you to life with no take back subscribe see you next week flat out wow what an amazing show and i want to show love to all of the people who have been in my inbox lately asking to sponsor a show um initially i was a little you know like i don't know if i want to do that but here's the thing i understand that there are so many ministries who need this platform to expand their brand so many businesses who need this platform to expand their brand and who am i not to to give you an opportunity so here's the thing if you want to be a part of sponsoring one of these love you more shows that will give you a commercial in the show why don't you go ahead and 
and do me a favor. All you got to do is email me, williemorejr, the number one, at gmail.com, williemorejr1 at gmail.com, and uh, I will take a look at what you are doing in hopes that we can maybe allow you to be a sponsor of this amazing show. All right? Flat out. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more.